Welcome. I had to change it up, y'all. The youth was back there calling me out last week. They said he says, good morning, church, every Sunday. So I had to mix it up on them a little bit, confuse them. Well, it's exciting to see all you all here this week. Uh, exciting day. As you can see, the preteens are handing out some palms. It is Palm Sunday, and uh, we begin Holy Week this week. How exciting for Christian believers to uh, celebrate Holy Week. Um, it's just very exciting. I'm always excited about Easter and uh, Holy Week. I know Lindsay is as well. She absolutely loves it. So uh, we got a lot of stuff going on this week, and uh, we're just glad to see all you all here this morning. Youth, as soon as I get finished, we are going upstairs as soon as I get finished uh, because we have something exciting this week as well for you all. So um, as soon as I finish up here, youth, just head that way. All right, uh, first off, we do have the progressive dinner tonight, so if you have a preteen child or a youth child, we will uh, be meeting here at 4 o'clock. The progressive dinner uh, is so much fun. We did it last year, had a great time with it. We got a lot of great hosts this year. Uh, it begins at 4, and we are figuring it will be completed around 8 tonight, uh, and we'll be back here to drop all the kids off. So if you have youth or a preteen age kid, uh, please bring them out this evening. This is an amazing event. It's so much fun, and we love doing it. So if you all can, just bring those kids out. Uh, let them participate in this. It's going to be a little different this year, and I am excited about it. Um, I get to do the devotions part of it, so I love that part. Uh, but I am very excited to do it. So we're excited. Bring them out. It's going to be a good time. They're going to get their bellies full, and uh, hopefully everybody will have a good time doing it this year. That is 4 p.m. tonight. All right, also coming up this Wednesday, 327, uh, we are celebrating Holy Week. Jesus uh, took the humble role of a servant and washed the feet of his disciples, and uh, we are going to be having a foot washing here at 7 p.m. this Wednesday, 327. Um, it's a great experience to come and be a part of, uh, to see what Jesus did and what... Uh, uh, how Jesus did participate in the feet washing and how he went from being the highest king ever to a servant of washing the feet of his 12 disciples. Uh, so it's an absolutely humble, exp humbling experience, and please come out and join us for that. I think that's going to be upstairs. Right, Lindsay? You're going to do it upstairs in the youth room? Absolutely, absolutely. So what Lindsay was saying, preteen age kids uh, come and serve. They just help carry water and everything. It is more comfortable if you uh, bring a partner, someone you're familiar with. Um, she said it makes it less weird. Those, those are not my weird words, but. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so, so if you have a partner or something um, to come and uh, participate with you, um, that would be awesome as well. That is 327, 7 p.m. It will be upstairs in the youth room. It's the gray door uh, when you first pull up to the church here. So uh, Lindsay will be taking part in that and assisting with that as well. So Preteens here around 6 o'clock. So if you have a preteen child who's going to help, 6 o'clock is the time to be here. Again, that's 327 this Wednesday night. All right, Easter Sunday's coming. Um, it's next Sunday. We're excited about it. Resurrection of Jesus. And uh, for Easter, we have a lot going on. We're going to have some live worship, uh, which is absolutely awesome. We have, yeah, Young Clap. They're a good band. <laughs> uh, they, they did this, uh, I believe it was last year as well. Absolutely awesome. Miss Stacy's going to be singing for us. She has a beautiful voice, so y'all come out and hear her. Uh, along with the guys who uh, are playing the music and everything. Those guys do an awesome job. Um, it's absolutely amazing when we have live worship. So you guys make sure and come out for that. Also, Miss Kristen um, Sparkman will be taking pictures that day. Uh, so you can come in your Sunday best, your Easter best, but 
if you don't like to dress up for Easter, these pre-tans are throwing a complete curve in our entire week. Uh, Pre-tans do this yearly, and it is called Ditch the Dress Up. And what they do with this is you don't have to dress up. You can, amen, <laughs> absolutely. You can, you can come, and the money that you would have spent on um, all your fancy Easter clothes, they have a bucket right back here at the preteen's room that you can donate to Operation Christmas Child. Um, they're taking donations for that. So if you don't want to dress up and you want to give to that as well, you don't have to give to that, and you don't have to dress up anyways. Um, we're just glad everybody's here, so that's the main thing. Um, but if you want to uh, uh, participate in that and ditch the dress up, you're welcome to. You do not have to donate, but uh, that's the preteen theme of Easter, and that'll be going on next Sunday. It's an exciting day, uh, but please come out because, again, we are going to have pictures and everything, and uh, you're welcome to get your picture made, all that. Uh, Kristen does a great job and is always excited to do it for us. She's been doing it for quite a few years now, and pictures are awesome, getting Easter pictures taken with your family. All right, one last thing, uh, and then I've probably gone on five or ten minutes, so I ain't going to stay up here much longer. But one last thing is the women's conference that's coming on 4-6. All you women, please make a note on that. Um, as well, that is from 9 to 12, Saturday, 4-6, uh, there is a QR code somewhere. Where is the Q QR codes? Somebody help me out. At the connection table. Should be. It is. I got confirmation. It is. There is a QR code at the confirmation table, uh, or at the connection table, um, that you can scan and pre-register. The ladies do need you to pre-register if you're planning on coming. It would help them out a lot so that we can get all the correct amount of food. Um, and just make sure we have enough room and everything as well. So if you do plan on coming, please stop by the connection table, grab that QR code, go ahead and pre-register. That just helps us out uh, so nobody gets left out on food or anything as well. we got some wonderful speakers coming. Uh, our very own Miss Melanie McMurray here is going to be speaking for us as well during that, and it's going to be an absolutely great time for all the ladies. So with that being said, uh, that pretty much wraps it up. You all, we're excited about Holy Week. We're glad all y'all are here. Um, it's just such a wonderful time to celebrate what Jesus went through uh, the last week of his life. And it starts today. We're glad all of are here. And uh, let's just open our hearts and minds to worship this morning, to hear a word from God. And uh, I'll go ahead and pray. Youth, don't forget, immediately when I get done, we're going upstairs. All right, if everyone will, just bow your heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for just this opportunity to uh, be a part of of this church father thank you so much uh, for this sunday as we celebrate holy week palm sunday is the kicker off lord and we are just so thankful that jesus rode triumphantly in to jerusalem on the back of a donkey father humbling himself even more the coming messiah the savior of the world has come into jerusalem father we are just so thankful for his sacrifice the sacrifice that he gave that all of us may receive eternal life through him and through his blood shed on the cross Father, we pray that you're just here with us this morning, that you uh, pour out your spirit upon us, and you pour out your spirit upon all the churches in the area, Father. Father, let us all represent you and just glorify your name. Let us be welcoming, and let us be uh, attentive, attentive to others' needs, Father. Father, you are just so great, so awesome, and so powerful, and we love you so much. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Good morning, Uphill Church. It is uh, Palm Sunday, and uh, it's just a, a great day. And uh, our preteens was out here earlier, and uh, they really wanted to do that one worship song that we started off with. So we threw you off today. We did four today instead of, instead of three. So you never know what's going to happen. We might do something crazy and do four songs. Uh, with today being, uh, being Palm Sunday, uh, it's a, I'd say a, a special day. And Jason already mentioned that earlier, and that was a day that was set aside uh, in preparation of the Passover. And Jesus rode into Jerusalem, and people were laying down palm branches, and, uh, and they were even waving them, and they were crying out, uh, Hosanna. And what the significance of that day was recognizing Jesus now as the Passover lamb. More specifically, recognizing him as the new king. Well, we know that that didn't go over so well because 
less than a week later, he would be crucified. Because he was crucified, three days later, he arose, and that's the reason why we can have life and have it abundantly now. It's because Jesus resurrected, and that's why Easter is such a big deal. There's been many other great people that have spoken and given great wisdom and insight and even religious aspects. But Jesus is the only one that has ever died and rose again. And he did not die again. Now he is raised. He is sitting on the right hand of the Father. And that's where he is at now. And so Easter is a big deal because we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And I'm excited about it. And I hope you are and that you are inviting people. I've probably invited more people to this Easter than uh, I ever have before. And uh, I'm, just, I'm so excited. It's a great time. A, a good friend of mine, he always calls it, it's the church's Super Bowl. Uh, it's the way he compares it. And uh, uh, whatever you need to do, but uh, it's, a, it's just a big, really big day. And then Kristen Spartman, she does photography. She's doing that free. Uh, she's done that for several years. And so it's just going to be a great day. So I encourage you to come, invite somebody to be with you. It's just going to be a great day. So we're, we're really excited about it. And we're excited about today. And we're concluding this series that we've kind of been on about all in. And uh, here... What we're fixing to do is, after the message today, we're going to participate and uh, just refer to as communion. So we're supper and uh, that's what we're going to be saying today. And I think uh, this year's all in is really going to be fun. I think we're going to be all in on this year's all in. And this is going to be the best year of my walk with God. A lot of times we use excuses or we think are good, not excuses, but good viable reasons why we can't go all in with God. We started out with our first week talking about Moses. He had some good reasons. Uh, he couldn't speak well. He said that uh, nobody would believe him. Plus, he had committed murder. Uh, he was an unlikely candidate to lead God's people out of slavery, but that's who God chose. He needed a little bit of convincing, but eventually he did go all in, and he led all of God's people, the Jews, out of slavery. And he became a great, great leader. But it started by him doing one simple task. Take off his shoes. One task. Something simple. And we talked about that week that you're going all in with God. One task. What's the one simple thing God wants you to do? Then the next week we learned about uh, someone else in the Bible. He took over after Joshua or after Moses and that was Joshua. Joshua, whenever God called him, he was excited. He went all in from the very beginning. I mean all in. And then later, God asked him, they had a confrontation. He said, you need to take off your shoes. And he reminded him that even though you go all in, it's a continual renewal. It's a continual commitment. And that we often need to continue on what God has called us to do. And we asked if maybe you need to recommit your life to God. The last week we talked about an unlikely candidate. This was a farmer, uh, an average person. Uh, this was many years after Moses and many years after Reluctant, like most of us are, but he went in there with his will. And he went, and God said, Good money, they give you 30,000 army, but that he went, and God put him with bounty and with money. And he had to go and start to follow after the Lord. And so this week, we're going to try to see if we can go back to the last week about maybe what you've done with your life as far as your actions and the ways you live. Go back to the person you were. Today is unlike any other, because we're learning about somebody that I think is very unlikely, or very unlikely, or very unlikely. I'll tell you what it is. Women, I can ask you this question. If I were to ask you, are you all in with God right now? Women, some of you would say, well, beyond a shadow of a doubt, yes, I am. Others of you would say, no, I'm not. But you may be 
kind of on the fence, not not sure where you may where you may be. I think one of the reasons that keep many people from going all in with God is because we look at our lives and we feel that inadequate, that unworthy. We may look at our lives, and whenever we even look in the mirror as we're getting ready and we reflect on that, we don't like who we see. You may be like I am, and here in the spring we had just a slew of birthdays this past summer. Did anybody else have a birthday? Yesterday was one of our girls' birthdays. She turned 12 last year. where we've not met the expectations that we've set our, out for ourselves? Maybe it's judgment from others. What is it that that is preventing you from going all in with God? I mean, all in. And maybe you're like, well, I don't want to be one of those holy rollies. I don't think I am. I mean, I, I talk about God and I invite people to church, but I don't roll out my Bible and smack the people on the head. I mean, it would probably get some attention if we've done that, but what does it mean to go all in with all we have? What does it mean? Many times I think what keeps us from going all in with God is that we think we have to get our act together and then go all in with God, but that's not the way he does it. All these people in the Bible we talked about, he called them and they continued to develop their walk with him. That was what he did. He just wanted somebody to say, these teachers and they would call the roll and they would go down the list and everybody would respond here 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 and then they would get to somebody that was not there and nobody would say anything and then the teacher would look up and dress your best. He didn't ask for the best version of yourself that day. All he wants you to say is here. Sometimes it just takes us a little humble to go before the Lord. Maybe you're here today and you've had a rough week. Or maybe you're here today and your life hasn't quite turned out to be the way you thought it would be. of his robe done with him. There stood above the seraphim on every hand. There stood above him, each having six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was here we are introduced to the prophet Isaiah, and he is showing us that he is in the presence of God. And it's one of the most powerful, 
experiences and locations ever. He's in the throne room. He's in the throne room of the Lord. And he's there, and the first thing that he describes is, I saw the Lord sitting, not in a chair. Anybody could sit in a chair. The Lord can sit on a throne. Throne. Anybody can be common and sit in a chair, but when you're sitting on a throne and you're described as lofty and exalted, and all that means is that you can see that he filled that up with his presence. He belongs on that throne. He belongs there. And he was reigning with ultimate authority to lofty, to exalted, to reclining, to make his recline in the day, is that he was somebody that was reigning in the utmost high honor. And Isaiah sees this as he's standing in the presence of God in the throne room. The throne room. I don't have one of those in my house, even though I do here in Memphis. My wife is so excited to see me up there in the Lord's presence. A lot of times when we think of ruling, we think of throne. It's about what we have control of. But look at Isaiah's throne. so unique because of the six wings. You're not even looking upon the presence of things that are made by man. But he is crying out. He's crying out to the Holy Spirit. Lord, we just need you. We need you. And you, Isaiah, can do it. And yet he has to say, be on the throne. Then you see this deep authoritative voice and I could tell by the sound of his voice what he needed and how urgent it was whenever he would call out pastor I, I knew this as he's speaking you've got his train of his robe that filled up the temple the, the, the train we use it in our society for a pride and all it is is simply called a robe of religious ceremony because every time there was a bride for a wedding they always had somebody that helped with the train and they they may go over and light a candle or something and the first thing they do is when the bride comes back everything stops somebody that could just take over the presence of the Lord. That's what I picture when I think of that. Somebody just walking in, it's like it's just somebody, they always have that smile, they have that peace, they have that joy, they have that peace, they have that presence of God. And you see this in Oh, my. 
exact same faith tradition, whenever we maybe it's been a broken piece of the church or maybe that we need to give our life over to him or even that same piece that God may be calling us out to do something, we start going down the list. No, I'm not good. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I don't know enough Bible. Look at my past. I've got divorce back here. I've got abuse back here. Look what all I've got in here. Look at the mess that I've come from. What is keeping you from going all in with God? And maybe you identify with what Isaiah said here. Whoa. Whoa, I can't do it. I'm unclean. I'm unworthy. I can't live for God. <laughs> he wouldn't want me. He doesn't need me. We can keep going down the list. Why well, Isaiah, he had the same self-examination. And he said, woe is me. Look at me. Look at who I am. Look at where I live. Look at who I'm, I live with. I am not worthy to be in this presence. My question is, what about you? What about you? Are we worthy of being in the presence? I'm not talking about doing anything for God. I'm just talking about standing in the presence of God. Are we worthy? When we look at this, and don't get me wrong, I mean, this, doing a self-examination is never fun. We have a tendency to do it at the end of the year because we're getting ready for New Year's resolutions. A brand new year, a brand new you. This morning, you do a self-check, self-examination. What do you see? What do you see? Maybe God is... Maybe God is showing you that, that you are unclean or unsuitable and, and unworthy. Or maybe, maybe God is calling you out to do something. And maybe you have some thoughts. You're like, no, I can't do it. I'm going to mess it up. Uh, not me. Get somebody else to do it. What do we do when we feel so far from God? We feel so unworthy. What do we do when we do a self-examination and we don't like what we see? We don't like who we've become. What do we do when we feel God is calling us out maybe to do more? He wants a more intimate relationship with us. Or maybe he wants you to, to find a place that you can grow, a, a church that you can grow and, and be faithful to. What do we do? I want you to look at what happened between Isaiah and God. Because the first response Isaiah had is, woe is me, I am ruined. But here's what God did. Verse 6. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips and your iniquity is taken away. I love this. And he says, And your sin is forgiven. Your sin is forgiven. Isaiah found himself standing in the presence of God and called out, Woe is me. I am ruined. And God provided a way to cleanse him, to purify him. And I love this part. And it said, and your sin is forgiven. Your sin is forgiven. God purified him. And he cleansed him with a live hot coal. Isaiah was unclean, but now he was worthy to stand in the presence of God because he would have been clean. God did that for Isaiah. But church, what I want you to see is that God did the exact same thing for us. In Hebrews chapter 10, we're just going to look at it really fast. It's right up here. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. By this will of God, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all, God sent his son to die and raise again so that you are worthy. I want you to hear that. You are worthy to stand in the presence of God, not because of who you are, but because of what Jesus did. When he rose from the grave, he purified us. We are now, we're not, none of us are worthy. I'm not worthy, but I've been made worthy because of the sacrifice that Jesus did and rose again. He defeated death, hell, the grave, all sin that ever was, has been, and is committed, was forgiven right then. 
So we are able and worthy to stand in the presence of God. What does that mean for us this morning? One of two things. Either we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior for our sins, or we've not. If you're here today and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior for your sins, then I've got some great news for you. You are worthy to not only stand in the presence of God, but you are worthy to do anything and all that he has called you to do. What about the others? If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, then maybe that's what God is laying on your heart to go all in. You can go all in and you claim Jesus as your sacrifice for your sins. Church, it's that simple. Over the years, we've complicated it. Jesus died once for all. They used to have to do a ritual every year to be cleansed, to be cleansed, and this was before Jesus. But Hebrews 10 sums this up. So when you look in that mirror, when you look in that mirror, you might see that old person, or you might see your past. You might see that what you have back here, God can't use. But when God looks at you, he sees his son. When God looks at you, he doesn't see your sins, your faults, your mistakes. Praise God, he don't see that. When he looks at us, he sees the blood of his son. I am saved. And what that means is, is that I am forgiven. I'm forgiven. Church, can you say that this morning? If you can, I think God may be calling you to go all in with him and just walk with him. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but it does mean you'll have a relationship with him where you continue to grow and develop and watch what he does. Others, you may be here today and maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior for your sins. Or maybe you did it a long time ago and recited a prayer and, and maybe you really didn't know what you were getting into. And maybe what he's calling you out is like, man, it's time to go all in. Let's do this. Let's take it serious. And let's walk together. But it's all because of what he did. It's all because of what he did. The perfect sacrifice for our sins in his name is Jesus. Jesus makes you worthy to go all in with God you're not always going to get it right you're not going to be a perfect person you won't be a perfect Christian but you will have a relationship with him so as you continue to go as you continue to grow you become more like Christ and maybe you're here today and say, I don't, I'm not sure what that looks like to be like Christ so glad you are here because starting next week easter sunday that's what we're going to be talking about we're going to spend the next eight weeks talking and learning discovering together what it's like to walk with god starting next week so maybe you're here today like i don't know all that i know about this i don't know how to live this out i don't know what that looks like maybe you've got a good mindset of what you know about this and maybe it may be a mentioned Jesus earlier, maybe what's weighing on your heart is to invite somebody. Maybe it's to invite somebody. Maybe it's to your neighbor or co-worker. God knows the stuff that you're putting down here. God has to do something about stuff that he wants you to do. He doesn't want me to do your job. And and please don't say that people can do it. I got enough to do. I'll invite people. accepted Christ and he's cleansed you maybe you're here today and you need to accept Jesus Christ as your savior for your sins so it'd be a great time to nail that down but how is the Lord speaking to you today how is it that he is speaking to you 
How is it that he is calling you out? Maybe, maybe what you're doing here today, thinking, you know what, I just, I just can't. 1 Corinthians 11 says this. We're getting ready to partake in the Lord's Supper, and we're supposed to do a self-examination when we do this. This is in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 27. He says this, And therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks of the cup of the Lord unworthy, in an unworthy way, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a person must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For the one who eats and drinks, and eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not properly recognize the body. And that's the key, does not properly recognize the body. Whenever we do communion, we partake in this, we're recognizing that Jesus is the Savior of the world, that he is God's Son, and that we recognize him as our personal Savior. And so we're to do a self-examination. It's not about seeing if you are worthy or not. It's about recognizing the one who was worthy to make you standing blameless before God. Because when he sees you, he sees his son. He sees his son. It's not meant for you to recognize how unworthy you are, but it's to recognize how worthy he is. It's an opportunity of reflection so that you can be in the right mindset because church, what has been on my heart, this is what gets me excited. As a pastor, this is what really motivates me. It's because I dream I pray, for you, I pray for you all often, but I dream of a whole group, a whole church where everyone is all in with God. All in. I mean, could you imagine what that would do to not only our church, but to our families, to our work environments? Man, if everybody was all in with God, I believe it would change the world. But it starts with us recognizing Jesus as the one who is worthy as the one who is worthy maybe you're here today and you're like I'm just not quite sure Isaiah this was his response after he was cleansed this is again Isaiah 6 verse 8 so he said then I heard the voice of the Lord saying who shall I send and who will go for us and then I this is Isaiah then I said Here, here I am. Send me. He didn't ask him how qualified he was. He didn't ask his age. He didn't ask anything about the past. He didn't ask if he was qualified. He didn't do an examination to say, all right, now let's look through the list and what disqualifies you. Here I am. Here. Here. I'm not sure how you need to pray this morning, but here's an opportunity for you to respond to God's word. And I can't help but think that what he wants from us. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. The night that I gave my life to you, I don't exactly 100% remember what I did. But I know I did remember that there was a man or something
I think you need to go back and pray for them. I know that's kind of a well, I mean, really is, but we don't call them that. Every time you see them, that's what they do. And you look them back and you tell them thank you for that. Uh, that's that's not how you should be living your Christian life. But together, we can walk with the Lord and we can talking about just age because here you see that Isaiah there's no age in here all the children are just like that but let's keep the requirements of Jesus in front of us keep him humble no elder boy in here no elder boy in here I know some people are not quite as humble as they should be they think as long as you can keep that you're probably good God can use you just like you are but there's all these things that we do to grow in him. And it's just not about the age of the elder. It really is not. Whatever that age is going to be used for, it's all in what God wants to do in that boy, that girl. Are we looking around to use any guy? I think we can. We're going to pray right now. Heavenly Father, if you're talking to you right now, you know how many guys are here that need to be prayed for. Just like the little guy that came in, that his presence is going to be felt in every room. Thank you.